Seeded 12th, I believe, overall for all the teams that seeded the, themselves. So I, th I think that even says a fair bit. G2, though, they're going to be starting on the CT side with MIBR on the T side. Opening map here in this best of three. Hunter down in the underpass. And actually, he's going to go straight down. Just dropped immediately by Daisy. By Daisy? All right. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> the last thing you might have expected. But it's a brilliant name. It's a beautiful name, really. And Daisy now moving in towards the connector as well behind the smoke. There's going to be a lot of pressure. This is a huge lurk, and Jax is looking the wrong way. That should be the indicator. A great turn onto Nico. I can't actually believe he got that kill. That has to happen so quickly for him to pick it up. Jax, though, back for another one. Picks up a triple before he's finally down. So left in a two-on-two -two with Nexer and Amanek. Trying to see if maybe they could do something more. One of them is very low on health. Amanek, though, able to pick up the headshot. And the problem is, for Exit, the bomb is all the way out there. He's got plenty of time, but a little bit of an uncomfortable scenario. He's got time in the round. He had time to get that bomb a little bit earlier, just being cautious. And that's going to allow G2 to kind of rotate around and play together over towards jungle, moving through the window room. And now he's got a tough one versus two. Especially because they have an HE they can actually throw on top of him. That's going to maybe slow them down. Tries to get the jump and... Actually tried to fire the gun. That would have been very cool if he could connect at that shot. But now he's a little bit further back and just trying to shoulder peek him. Oh, Nexa. That's very clean. But that, that round could have honestly gone either way. Uh, I'm still a little bit impressed that Daisy managed to get that second kill on the academy player that's standing in, right? I want to believe so. <laughs> we were expecting a different name. In fact, you'd put real effort into... I did. Practicing. I did. I practiced that name quite a bit, and I was really excited to actually use it. But now it's... it's now it's just Daisy, and that's very easy. You don't need to practice that one. You don't, but at the same time, I've got to say, um, it's... I feel like it's... It would be even... Somehow, it would feel worse to get you know, one tap for the Deagle by a player named Daisy. I can't explain why. <laughs> it just feels like, you know, shouldn't be happening. Flower power. Exactly. Not this round. He's down. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Still some deagles on the board. It's still a little bit of danger here, but MIBR going to go for that strong third round buy after the opening round plant. And at the moment, just using these deagles, looking for any nice, easy kills. Looking for anyone to step into their way and find a fortunate headshot. Not coming just yet. G2 is uh, playing is pretty conservatively. They have full mid control, so they don't need to be too worried about necessarily losing a bomb site at the moment and a 2-2 split for MIBR's attack. That actually makes this B defense a little bit weak as everyone's leaning in that direction. You don't expect this much of a split from the attacking side, but obviously with a superior weaponry, G2's handling it fine. Yeah, would, it's annoying if you give up the bomb, bomb plant in a 2 on 5 like this, so I agree. A little bit weak. Knack picks up Jax. That's a very, that's a very nice little flick. Deagles, I don't know. I mean, they're so dangerous right now in just at, at any range that you have to just be careful, right? Oh, just, dear. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. Nico as well. This is so sloppy. Where is the where's the setup for G2? There's no chance for even a refrag for any of these. They're just getting shut down. Such a lean towards mid in the A bomb site. They thought the, the A bomb site was going to be perhaps the end game, and that's what made this B defense weak. But then, yeah, you get a couple of nice shots in the open from Knack, and all of a sudden it opens up the whole round. A two on two retake. Oh, if they walk into another shot, this could be. Oh, a disaster! Taking down an Exer. And now Emanek, one versus two. He's going to find one of them for free. But now, how long can he actually play for time? There is no kit on Amanek at the moment, so if Exit can just keep playing Ring Around the Rosie, maybe he could! Amanek, can I get the kill? No, but he has to run! The Deagles reign supreme! Like, even if they're, even if they're seated bottom of the groups here, it's still... Yep. They just, they're so hyped about it. They can bring some craziness into the server. They can't believe it, we can't believe it, G2 probably can't believe it. And that's, that's where, this is where, like, things, like me being worried about G2, obviously still early on, but this is where it's like, oh god, how do you... How much further is this going to spiral out of control, if at all? They're going to have to try and uh, stabilize pretty quickly here in this first half. One to one, and AK's full, full kits for everyone on MIBR. Yeah, because that round was just, it was very smooth for G2. They were doing like a nice parking job, and then right at the end, they just, they just floored it. Yeah, thought they were Killed in reverse, everything. and they just yeah. pushed the gas straight forward through the garage door. It's not a good time. Not a good time at all. <laughs> <laughs> Third round. And um, obviously, AK has been picked up. There's a scout in play. There's a Famas, and just a little bit for you two to try and fight back with. But ultimately, all the map control favoring MIBR right now. They've got everything they could want, maybe especially this position. But actually, the Molotov, how does it even burn SHC there? I don't even understand really how he died. 
Ooh, oh, there it is. He missed the check. Daisy's back to be at Anazon. Oh, you got you got your. I wish. nailed it. Give me that A plus. I you I think you did a very fine job. I've got to say I'm impressed. I might I'm gonna go with Breno. Apparently that's his. Re <laughs> I just as much as I want to. I just I think I'm gonna screw that up. Wait really really quickly. Cool setup this round from G2. That's allowed. Uh, that's put him in a big advantage. A three on one at the moment. Uh, really really kind of centered on connector underneath the window. You had Nico in the winter waiting for the or in the window waiting for the smoke to fade. You had a player in ladder room. A player in con. Really ready to pounce as soon as utility subsided and the and the clock's just gonna tick away. Exit more than happy to come out of this with an AK. No, that that seemed like because once you get that deep into the connector on the T side, that's such a powerful position. But they they just all died within the space of three seconds. It was really weird. Now what? No D. Well, it's one deagle on yell. So he's all the way over here. You're, you're kind of just going to be playing the uh, the bait game for exit with the AK-47. You know, you're going to take mid a little bit late. You don't have a whole lot of utility. Perhaps he just throws one flash over the wall to maybe buy yourself hack a, half a second, and then he's just playing the bait game on these Glocks and Deagles, trying to find some kind of an opening with the AK-47. And for the moment, MIBR passive looking for aggression before they decide to start making their move. Yeah, buying a look. I mean, they have plenty of time still, so why not spend a couple of more seconds to try and let G2 make a mistake. They already did in the second round. Maybe they'll do it again. That's some, that's some nice spray, even while he was flashed. Yell comes in with the follow-up clean kill there. Gotta be careful. I mean, to have it happen once, if you recover it quickly, maybe you just shrug it off if you're on the G2 side. Should it happen again? Ooh. How far is he gonna push? If he tucks himself into a corner, that'd be great, but he eats a deagle shot. Now the race to the B-bomb set is on, and it's actually, it's only going to be Hunter who's here, who's just shifted into position. He's going to try and find his duels. He's missed his initial shot. Got to hold on a little bit longer. Teammates are on the way, and Hunter, he's actually pretty comfortable until Exit finally puts him down. Yeah, he was already on 41 health when, when he showed up, so impressive that he got that one kill. Nexa, good spray, but he can't, can't transfer it on there, and now it's Amanek. One versus two. He's got a kit this time, and he's got the straight headshot taking down Knack. That's a pretty good start. Now just one person left to find the wall bang. It's in the right right area, but that wall gets really thick a little bit deeper in. So, yeah, he's going to have to try and see if he can relocate. He's actually got the perfect idea. He sees the back of him. Is he going to be able to catch him? Jumping, and that gives away his own position. Now he's got to look everywhere, and he must not have seen him. I thought that he did. Smoke is up there, and it's a Glock on the other side. That could take a long time. He almost found him. Two seconds left. Some access to the bomb site. A lot of work for Hunter after that moment, and... Again, there's a little bit of a tug of war uh, back and forth between these two teams in the first four rounds. Painful for G2, without a doubt. Breno getting really close to uh, to getting that kill there on Hunter, I think. But Hunter, that MP9 rate of fire is incredibly high. He's actually trying to jump off the ladder while flashed, and he did get the dink on exit. So fair play to Hunter for making that you know a little bit more, uh, more difficult than it could have been. Jax actually forced into that, and yeah, they must have heard it. Yeah, I was going to say, Exit certainly has heard the the, bird, the Molotov tick, and he was going to be ready, but his teammate had his back. And this is a good cleanup for MIBR, finally able to sustain and outlast the four spies from G2. So they're going to take a 3-2 to two lead. Oh boy. You worried yet? <laughs> <laughs> In the sense that we, I think we all picked G2 to take this one, right? Yeah. So, so at least from a predictions point of view, if we're, we're going to be wrong, we're all going to be wrong together. That's always comfortable. Yeah. Doubt I don't know if going down people with the on ship. the Titanic were happy that <laughs> yeah, everyone was, gonna was gonna drown, but... It's, it's very uh, small, small amount of comfort. That's how I would look on the bright side if I was on the Titanic, though. I'd be like, at least we're all, we're all screwed. We've all hit the iceberg together. <laughs> It's, it's Somehow it'd be worse if one guy had a little boat that he could just jump into and sail away. I think there was a whole thing about that. You know, some people having boats, some not. That I've was a whole story. Movie, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making I hate up. you. Um, <laughs> this, this is what's so weird, though, because I, I, I would like to be able to come into this group stage and, Shay, and say G2 is just going to spank everybody on their way to winning this group, like, hands down. It, it should be. They're a number three ranked team in the world. MIBR is number 48. Uh, NIP is, what, nine. Big is 13 as well. So you have this feeling that G2 should be able to take over this group, but just the play that we've seen from them outside of their performance in Cologne, 
nothing has been inspiring. Nothing is inspiring confidence in any one thing that they're going to be able to have an easy avenue. And yeah, with this kind of a start as well, this is the tough part about playing Brazilian teams and especially teams with stand in as well. One of their biggest advantages is the ability to just gain momentum and roll with this. Yeah. As the game goes on longer and longer and you're not able to handle them, it just gets worse. Well, a big chance right here for G2 to, to, to take some control back before the Brazilian Madness gets all the way out of control. But look at this play from Exa just running right in. He had a wall of smokes that he was running through to get into that position. And Hunter is down. Amanek to fall. Shot through a smoke by Yell with an AWP. And just like that, it's a 5-1-3. Now, they're failing this boost in hilarious fashion, but they could just slow this down a little bit. 5 versus 3 they've got over a minute left. Yeah, everybody chill. Everybody calm down. See what the next play is going to be from G2. They've got all the pressure on them for the moment of having to find out where your end game is. So, yeah, everyone kind of check your flanks. See if there's going to be a push through Palace. See if someone's pushing in those B halls that we saw Jax do earlier. On some maps, if this was Inferno, maybe we'd even say just put everyone in either A or B, like the three remaining CTs, and hope, and then save the rifles. Would you say that on Mirage? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I think on Mirage, you can play retake at A with, with not ease, but, you know, it can be done. I think at this point, if you're going to play retake on A, which they are, um, you're hoping for one or two kills as they enter the bomb site. Jax has just shifted away from the B site as well. So, yeah, you, you can do it, but I think the retake ability of A is quite nice yeah. on Mirage. But either way, MIBR this round, they, they found the free bomb site. They've scouted it perfectly. Now they commit and free bomb plant and a fifth round. I'll tell you what, that's a good opening kill from exit. And a lot of the conversation about MIBR has to be not having bolts here, not having cello here. Those are your Ooh. two best players. And they're also players that have good impact on entry kills. Exit is someone who takes far less opening duels than the rest of his teammates, but he's got a great percentage. So if you're going to try and replicate some of the opening kill success that someone like bolts and cello bring to the table, yeah. you'd probably tap exit and say, you do great at opening kills. We just need you to start taking more and looking for those opportunities. This round, he does a great Great job sprinting up catwalk and finding that first kill. Yeah, th those two players missing are, are the tricky losses for different reasons, right? Because yeah. Boltz is, is the experience. Oh, he's also a good player, but also a massive a roller coaster. He's having he's having flashbacks <laughs> <laughs> like, to a no, week ago. No, please God, take me back to the beaches. Were they are they trying to do the boost? Yo, you can do that to get up there quickly, but you have to do it quickly, otherwise. Yeah, they, they certainly missed the timing on it. Ooh, Jax, this is dangerous, playing around the edge of the smoke, trying to make a play, and he's only able to get one. Hunter's here with the CZ. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful fadeaway. Still good trades and a decent round. This is still very doable for MIBR. Omenex still relegated onto the Deagle. Two rifles alongside it to retake the B-bomb site. Oh, that Molotov, they can't put it out. There's no smoke that just blocked off two people. One kit on Nexa as well. Keep your eye on that. That's a good point, yeah. We need to make sure that doesn't get lost in transition into the bomb site because that was a disaster earlier. It's out there. Oh, but he actually peeks the wrong way. Now, all on Brenner. One versus three. He's going to get the one kill. They've got plenty of time. They can still definitely do this. Oh, he's going to get one more headshot. Taking down Nexa, and that is the kit dropped over to the left-hand side. And he's just trying to play around it. Sees him, plays for time. This is actually very, very smart for Breno. He's finally going to get taken down by Nico, who did pick up the kit. And I think he's just going to have just enough time down to the last milliseconds here. Ooh, as he oh, oh, the P2 is not feeling comfortable. 0 0.2 seconds on the bomb. And just to reiterate, if Nico doesn't run over the kit as he's getting over there to take that fight, he's never even going to defuse it, right? This is like the third boost. What are they doing? <laughs> Get into it, Anders. What is happening? Tell, tell me what you really think. I think you and I, Jason, could do better in real life getting that boost. <laughs> I think we could do that. Which one of us is uh, is the booster? Because I think that would change things. Obviously you. <laughs> Slightly shorter, better center of gravity. That yep. kinda, that's. <laughs> Thank God you've been in the gym, my man. <laughs> bald, 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 bald head. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I so know. many positives. I <laughs> Just had to mention it, you know. Ninth round, and um, we've got an organ play. I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad that Orc has found found this weird spot where, like, some people buy it every once in a while, and it kind of doesn't work. But it's not. It's not incredibly overpowered, unlike that one way. Smoke. Yeah, that was a filthy angle one way that I don't think Shez expected whatsoever. Definitely not. And then obviously he's showing up. With the AWP is Amanek. I 
really like Amanex orping. I think it's a little bit underrated. Yell, one versus four. He is uh, not going to get any momentum away from G2. That's kind of the next test for this half, because if you're in my BR, you've had a fantastic start to the game, but you're going to forget about that real quick if this half goes south in the other direction. Yeah, that is true. It's still so early on. They can't really just glide on that for too much longer either. Noticing that they actually swapped the org out for an AK, so just as a weapon preference thing, they, they should prefer the AK, I suppose. Fair play, quick entry into the bomb site, but Amanek is there, and he's going to shut down both Exit and Shans, and that means Yell and Reno are left two versus four, and a very hard round to get out of with anything positive now. I like the idea of actually changing the pace so rapidly the A bomb site, which they haven't really done before. But they ran into a, a really a brick wall. Uh, yeah, it might have been a good idea. And, and perhaps G2 thought the same thing because they had the perfect setup for it. Player aggressive on a ramp, player aggressive in the bomb site, And then also you have an op far back at ticket booth to clean things up. Amanek does a fantastic job. Three great kills. <clears throat> Even though Nico goes down without really a fight. And Yell left in a one versus four trying to explore 40 seconds on the clock, and really at this point, it's either about damage or finding an attitude to save this AWP. Yeah, in the middle of the map. I mean, sometimes that actually can work if you're just hiding in the, in the worst place possible. They're never going to come look. But now, now they definitely know. Tricky to get out of here. Grenades raining down. The pressure is definitely building on him. If they lose this round, they're not going to have that much money to work with. At least, um, Shaz is a little bit low there. Nice little sneak. Well, it's not even deagles, actually. No, it's not. Yep. AKs and, and I mean a, a good call as well. They have a really strong buy here, even with just one Galil and one Deagle. Good utility though as well. Back to mid control. Nico's blinded for a second. Missed the opportunity on the first and is barely able to recover the second. Down to one HP. He's got to tuck himself into a corner. And unfortunately, I don't think Omnidex really in a position for him to be able to trade that AWP out. Maybe if he falls back towards window room. Yeah, has to take a long trip around the map to, to get back to pick that up if they want to trade it. Kind of makes sense that yeah, they will. Yeah, they're meeting up. We'll exchange. Cool. So you either park Nico over by, by ticket booth with the AWP, or you put him up in the B halls to get that deep angle, which is a little bit risky this late into the round. But you basically put him out of the action and just say, just get one kill with that op as they enter the bomb site. We'll do the rest of the work. I think Breno actually saw that boost, even though it wasn't a boost on top of the box. It was, you know, further from behind. Yeah. He still just actually did spot it. So that's some interesting information. I mean, if, if you were in any doubt about how many people were there, you definitely know. They're running out of utility, though, Anders. They've got one smoke, three flashbangs, and an HE grenade. It's the one smoke that's kind of a bit scary. This is a big kill. If Pierre Enezan can get this, and he does indeed. A beautiful headshot from the man, and he's going to move into the A-bomb site all the way. And remember, Nico's here with one HP. He's got to be really careful about his angles. And next is the insurance policy. But MIBR's aware, and that's a big kill. Nice awareness to actually check that position and not just make the assumption. Now, maybe do a little bit of less fighting. I know it's a three on four, and you, you could do a lot here, but don't give up the kills too early. They really need to slow this one down, and yep. It's got to be a save. I think one HP on Nico, you don't want to risk that. And MIBR is being real aggressive towards your point of retakes, peeking down those stairs. They know Jax is in market, and now they know it's a save. But G2's kind of locked in, and Nico's got to be real careful with that bomb explosion. Yeah, you're right. He actually he actually might even have to get a little bit further away than this. It's so unfortunate. Breno was here, and that's going to be the AWP down on the ground. Hunter alone. I like it looked to me for a second like MIBR were being a little bit aggressive in that fight. But they, if I had the hype man that they have on the MIBR side, imagine that in your room just behind you. Just, oh, yeah. That'd be incredible. <laughs> Rent a hype man for the day. Yeah. That should be a service. Someone, someone come up with that. Well, we're in the 12th round. Money is a little bit better now for MIBR. Not so much so for G2, but Amanek is still hitting shots with that AWP. That might be the thing that saves them, honestly, in this first half. If he can keep doing that for another couple of rounds, that's all they really need. And Nexer as well, a couple of good shots exploiting that uh, the edge of that box just to take down a couple of kills. Then smokes himself off just to stay hidden for a while. So two versus five now. And uh, this A, this A bomb sign hasn't really been treating MIBR that well. When they go straight at it, they seem to fall pretty quickly. Yeah, well, the first time they went here, remember they tried that palace play. We like the switch up of pace and kind of a contact out palace, and it was a, a really nice defensive call from G2 having three players here. This time they try and do the same thing except up a ramp, and there's only one player here. It's Nexa in dark, and that double kill is massive. G2 will avoid the economic death. 
they would have had to have saved if they lost that round. So super important pivotal round there in the 12th. Now 13th is coming up. Got a Mac 10 on Breno, so he could be he could be pretty aggressive. Sometimes when you have that, you just want to go for the B bomb side because you can jump out of the hallway, but. They're not going to be taking it through the hallway. They're actually coming in through the catwalk instead. He will go down. Hunter trying to make up for it. He's on his own and a nice triple kill taking down the main force of that push. They actually did a really good job of kind of disguising that for a decent amount. The utility in mid, the pressure of A-Ramp from Yell. He just took a contact fight real briefly through smoke at top A-Ramp and backed away. That kept a lot of attention on A. Gave them that space up catwalk, but obviously not able to get by Hunter. Two back-to-back -back rounds now where the defense is, has lived and died on, on multi-kills of a, basically a one single player defending a bombsite. Nexa under Dark with a double kill in the previous, this time Hunter with three. And Yell's going to slow the pace down, give time for Knack to have a flank, see if he can have a go at a good kill on the other side. But, man, G2 is going to be very aware of this. With this kind of time, with this yeah. kind of quiet, uh, this is all the alarm bells are going off to check the flank. Yeah, you know, that's a nice little pickoff. Yell, the little bit early fight there for Hunter, just giving away his position. I don't know if Knack is going to clear this angle as deep. Oh, he does. Great headshot, two versus two now. And this makes Nico uncomfortable, and Knack almost had another. Yeah, he walked right into that angle. That could have been the end. 20 seconds, and Yell has to think about that. If you waste a little bit too much time, it's going to be real bad. Tries to disguise the drop with a shot, but, but it's not going to be what, what they would have really wanted the way that this half got started, I have to assume. Flashes out, Breno trying to take the lead there, getting shut down immediately, and they're so flashed coming out. And now the Molotov behind them is gonna slow everyone else down, so... Probably just a run to try and get the bomb down, but that's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at that point, yeah, you're trying to get into the site and swarm with those pistols, the P250s, the Tech 9s, and great counter utility from G2 to put a stop to that immediately. <clears throat> Split the attack. First two attackers completely blinded. And this should be G2 taking at least a one-round lead into the second half. This should be getting them getting to eight. I mean, it feels like some of the some of the speed behind some of these pushes here for MIBR is getting red. Maybe I mean G2 probably should have expected that some of this game would be fast. But maybe they were caught sleeping a little bit in the beginning. As successful as MIBR would have liked. And G2's finally got their feet beneath him, it feels. Still a bit close for comfort, and Yell cannot convert. Nico again, a little bit of a one-way over the top of the smoke. Vision obscured for Yell. And Aminek's going to chime in one more time with the up. So a five on three in this final round of the first half. Yeah, and it happened so quickly, doesn't it? Brennan was in there, but Nico, a little bit of a distraction. I was going to say he's probably not going to forget about the fact that someone could be up here, but actually he is in a little bit of danger. Gonna be back to safety now. Nico's ready for it. Weird off angle. Knack is not expecting it. And up in the A Palace. Jack's nearly winning that fight, but gonna be one single point of health left for exit. That's not super encouraging either. It's all on Breno. Academy player who's actually been playing very well at this level so far. Yeah, he's had a very good game. You gotta be pleased with that at the very least. But Nico's heard his footsteps as well, so they know they know exactly where someone is. And ooh, Amanek through the grate. That feels a little unreasonable. Yeah, I don't know how it takes that, but it's even if you hit the air in it, it doesn't even matter, does it? It's just, it still yep. just works that way. One health in a one versus four. Well, it would be highlight making if he could, if he could pick it up. I have no idea how you would, though. They have nades, they have actually three Molotovs and an HE. So, very likely going to be the end of the road here. G2, they're going to be... I mean, the, the fact that they made it back to nine rounds, I guess, is, is sort of a good recovery here. Oh, he's, he's being allowed another chance. away as well, you know? They could have had so much less than six if, if G2 hadn't dropped two deagle rounds early in the game. Yeah. So... Those really did open it up, didn't they? Play the, that game all day long. And I guess, you know, just for G2 to not repeat the, uh, the disaster of earlier, it's nice to see them recover the, the whole game here yeah. and, and do a good job. Now they're going to try and be aggressive on the site. Some flashes to try and avoid the initial, you know, USP one-shots there. They're getting really close with the Glock and hiding in the corner by the ticket booth. You've got to be really scary, but uh, really careful about that. Nack actually does get a kill. They've dished out a lot of damage, and the bomb, well... Oh, that's awkward. I don't know if they like that fight, but three players, that's a very, very tight choke point for G2 to get stopped in. Now they've yeah. backed away. Now they can be more comfortable. 
Has he not seen him? I'm just going to say, Breno, he could have seen him for a long time. Nico getting a headshot as well, taking down Exit. And that bomb plant was so quick that they actually have to move a little bit faster. And Nico's finally going to fall, but he took three people with him. And Yell is on his own, and I don't have no idea. If they don't show themselves here, he can't really find them. That smoke got thrown onto the bomb, but he sort of needs to be inside the fusing. It's just done with. He's going to back out, try and look for a couple of more kills, potentially. That's a nicely one person or one or two in CT spawn, then you're happy to go. But if it's all three, you, you think no. Well, you will usually find out that all three are there until when you turn <laughs> <laughs> you turn that corner. I think another part of it, too, they had kind of used both their flashbangs to take that fight. And when you don't have that utility, it's sometimes uncomfortable against those USPs. Good scout kill finishes up the damage that Exit did, but G2's coming full force. Deagle's again ringing out. Knack with the Deagle and Yell with the Scout have forced G2 away. And Hunter's got to be the pivot point for his teammate, for Nico, to go to the other side of the map. And he's almost cleared it out. Oh, but the Deagle down there, not quite able to get that shoulder shot off. That would have been really cool oh. if he could have actually picked it up. But um... Bombs actually dropped. Oh, you're right. I thought Nico had it, was going to be able to get around. They actually have to commit to this bomb site, and Nico is one scout, one Deagle away from death. Hunter's not exactly living the dream with his HP either. That scout did uh, more work than I was expecting back there. And they, they actually knew that it was there immediately, but they just decided to fight it straight up and didn't even care about anything. Some off angles being picked up here from Knack especially. Could be interesting to see what he could do. Smoke is going to bounce down. That's going to be a huge gap, so he's not going to care about that. Hunter will go down. That almost just served to, to you know, reinforce Knack's belief that someone was going to show up. Now it's all on Nico. 30 seconds. He'd have to get a kill, run back and pick up the bomb, or take, for f take the fight against both of them, really. But um, only 25 seconds. Now, they don't really know where he is at the moment, but they might find out. He's going to be shooting him in the, in the pistol round G2. Maybe they just cruise their way to a victory here on Mirage. Because, again, they, they are the much-favored team. But that makes it interesting. Although, Nico, I, I'll never get bored of a good Nico one dig. No, I don't think anyone will. Ooh, that's a beautiful one as well. Well, uh, that was short-lived for MIBR. <laughs> it was a good time while it lasted, that, that second round hype. Um, they, can't, they can't go for this. They're completely out of position. They had to lean towards the B-bomb site, and uh, G2 is going to get a freebie off the back of those two one digs, and not a single point of damage dished out by MIBR in the round. The Hunter one was just a, you know, he took his time to aim. He wanted to see the, the fear in the other guy's eyes before he pulled the trigger. He wanted the guy to see what was coming. Yeah. He was like, I'm just going to wait. Yeah. I want you to watch. Just watch the, the, the sun bounce off the chrome of this deagle, and then, then I'm going to fight. He's like every movie villain in the 90s. Like, I want to look into your eyes. Yeah. Always, as it happens. Always take like 10 seconds longer <laughs> so that they can escape. That's how it's done. Jax, though, he's out looking. Why not? Yeah, so, I mean, th that's obviously incredibly disappointing. I'm sure for for, uh, for MI Beyond, that's a, a huge window to get back into the early part of the second half. Too much more rarely nowadays. Do you miss it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trick question. <laughs> There's only one right answer. Reddit would have just absolutely <laughs> destroyed you. It's setting me up to sabotage. <laughs> Nico through the smoke is going to find a nice one. Two openings in back-to-back -back rounds for Nico. That's a, that's a very bold position for Nat to take when no one is even aware of what's happening in the underpass. Yeah, being over-aggressive, trying to make a quick play in the window to equalize the player count, and it just digs them a deeper hole. This next round's a bit too long. Four-round lead for G2, but they're in great position to extend that to five to a 12-7 round score. And it's their turn to be patient after a bunch of opening. Sit and wait, see what the response from MIBR is. And here it is, the aggression on Catwalk. They want to go get information in mid. Three-player collapse. Hunter is still in relative safety, but it's ripped away from him. And now the equalizing kill. Now a three-on-three. Three. And they've got two players on Cat that can spin around and address the B situation. Yeah, they're really close by. A little bit awkward. Jax, he actually looked like he got caught on the wall there. Don't be doing that. 37 seconds, and they're, they're trying to stay communicative here. MIBR, you can tell, instead of just rushing in for the immediate fight, they're trying to see if they can set themselves up for some trade kills, getting into the site. They do actually have a Molotov. That could be real interesting if they get onto the site itself, but that might not be possible. Jax here doing a lot of work, nearly a double kill for him. Two versus two, but the health advantage heavily in favor of G2 at the moment. And that's a bit awkward. 
Deep Molotov, deep nade on top of it. They do have a kit on exit, so if they're really fast, maybe they could do it. Exit gonna be taken down. Nico Namanek back here. The Krieg in play now. He just needs another bullet on exit, and he's practically gone already, and I think he knows it. Not enough time here. He's trying to see if he could force him into a fight, but it's not gonna happen. Amanek, the round score of this five-round lead. MIBR is gonna be spending essentially the rest of this half on the back foot. Now they're scrambling to have something to fight with while also leaving themselves enough money for the next round. Um, but it's it's no more it's no mistake territory for MIBR. Truly. A little bit of a shame that was the Mac 10, but actually it was Amanek picking up all the kills with the AK back then. So that's just how it deemed yeah. like the recovery is, is from, maybe a little bit steeper than you thought. From the back and forth in the first half and like kind of early economic control for MIBR, as sketchy as it's felt and looked at sometimes for G2, uh, you know, they've they've actually done a, a really good job and just kind of started to run away with this one. And certainly now that the scoreline is this spread, um, it seems pretty comfortable. I think it's because it's easy to remember the rounds where they get the deagle upsets and you think, ooh, they can build behind this, but then they actually don't. And yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and then the problem becomes, well, then, you know, there's not much left there. A bit unfortunate. But yeah, I think that's that's probably the right perspective to take that. That that 9 to the 9 to 2 run is it's hard to hard to deal with if you're on the MIBR side right now. Yep. They have very little grenades in the in this particular round. What what do you do? No defuse kit either. It's almost, almost like at one point you have to try and be, and be a little bit aggressive with some of this. Playing for the after part is maybe going to be tough. I think for MIBR, it's a lot of it is don't get picked off early like we've seen in a couple of rounds, and don't put your teammates into a position where they feel like they have to overextend to do something. Now again, a B lean for MIBR, and it's the wrong map, but don't worry, we're gonna hold down the bomb site. Triple kill out of Palace, and Nexa's got two on Catwalk, but the bomb is dropped far away, and again, G2 in a situation they have to try and recover. Hunter and Nexa to do it. Can they even get out there in time? I mean, it's about 20 seconds. There's a three-way crossfire. They're going to be walking into a triangle set up here by MIBR. Molotov as well on chance. So I don't know. Yeah, they're going to back on out. I kind of understand why. I have to be honest, that play, we're surely going to get the replay. That needs to be in like a Counter-Strike textbook for how to play because he's so wedged up in the corner. If he stays there after the first kill, they're going to be able to peek him so easily. But here, I mean, it's not a it's not a mistake. It just kind of delays the amount of time that he's able to come out and try and get the trade for Nico. Um, but obviously, a good triple kill. And he's going to get called upon again. The only defender one more time. They keep expecting some kind of a play towards the B-bomb side. Three-player stack in the previous round. Now four players over at a minute and 35 seconds. And uh, they've already lost the round. And this, you know... I think we all we all enjoy a good a good gamble at some point and a good like try yeah. and think you have a read, but I, you know I don't know if you can uh, necessarily pull off a comeback of this level when you're when you're doing it constantly. You know, I can tell the story now. Okay, here we go. It's been a, it's been a minute. Story time with Andrews. I remember once I remember once listening into North. Okay. Back when that was a thing, and I remember they 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 had a, a strategy. This isn't like at a tournament. This was at some event where they were like practicing or something, and they they were going over like ideas. And they said something along the lines of, "Sometimes we just do a a gut call B or A." Just, you know, without any information, like, you think it's going to be that. And I remember thinking, that doesn't even make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> because I just have no idea why. Like, I, I get it. If it works, that gut feeling is going to really be amazing. But if it doesn't work, it's going to feel probably twice as bad. Like, oh, you know, I risked it. See, I feel like... Well, that's what happened here. Tough. Also... The type of entry that Nico got crouching around the corner, nothing makes me angrier well, than being on the receiving end of that. On another level as well, maybe this is just kind of the punishment you deserve for sealing strats from north. <laughs> Good point. Leave those alone. <laughs> Make right. a little book so that you can check if you come up with a new strategy, you could see. Was that a north strategy? Don't, don't do it. I don't know. <laughs> G2 has won five rounds in this second half so far. Nico has had opening kills in three of them. All right. Second round, third round, and this just last one that occurred. Quiet on the map, a minute and ten seconds on the clock. Not really mid-control, but mid-presence for G2. Yeah, Nico at 24 kills, and Amanek at 21. Yeah, his op did great work on the CT side. Yeah. Hasn't really had to ring out a whole lot in this second half just yet, but obviously having a good game. 
my VR. Ooh, nice double knee. That landed on three people and killed one of them. That is, that's a jackpot we don't get to see too often. Jackpot. Exactly. <laughs> He's checked out now. He's out. <laughs> Ooh. Go. Again, doing the crouching, the crouching tabs. It's so lethal. It's so annoying to play against. But now they're just going to basically double, triple team him. And eventually, I think Amanek is really good for this team. I, lo I love his style. Okay. Adders is all in the, on the Amanek train. Yeah. I like it. Yell and off of his own. Amanek is going to go down first. Yell gets blinded right as he takes a shot. But his teammates are demolishing everything. And this is the style these past two rounds that are much cooler than those stacks towards the B bomb site. The nade stack in the previous round, base connector, here fighting for mid as a unit. And they've got a three on one. Nico's got no HP and he's a for G2. The fear is creeping back in. Up my spine. Yeah. Well, they have deagles. Don't want to count them out, of course. Nexa, not going to be the one in charge of getting one. Jax has the other one. Neck, almost walking into a bit of a P250. That is a that's an uncomfortable head. Oh my lord! So is that, please. Ooh. Don't be doing it. All right. Good cleanup in mid to regain control of that part of the map, and now spinning around to check the A bomb site. It's been his house this whole half, and he's going to continue it. Jax goes down, and he needed to be aggressive there. He had the positioning. Amanek not able to... They can fight for overtime. And these last three rounds have been solid victories. Three players surviving in each one. No bomb plants for the G2 side of things in those rounds either. So that extra bonus money from the bomb plant isn't coming in. So doing a good job, MIBR, of limiting some of the things that will help G2 fight for this. There's the boost up, and Yell going to take a deep angle with the AWP. How deep does he want to go? It turns out pretty much all the way with uh, Breno also leading the charge in front of him. Flashed in. They nearly did line up. That actually could have been a great spray down. He doesn't really want to stick around even though he had a bit of a nade. Tries to go for the quick flick but not going to be able to take anyone down. He's got some backup here in exit. No scope attempted as well. He's trying to just pull out all of the tricks and they did not work. G2, they felt the weakness of, of... They knew they were pushing, I think, that AWP. So just keep up the pressure and you're probably going to make it work. I actually feel a little bit bad. I like that push from MIBR. And I think it was maybe a second of what committed to a fight because none of them feel comfortable and not able to do anything in that position. Do you think, Jason, the... The Sumas that are running towards the B hallways on this map from the T side, when they run past the... The CRT TV, do you think they know it's a TV? I'm gonna train to the other side of the end mark, which admittedly is small, but still, yeah, I, I brought my CRT monitor with me. That's I dropped it on the way home, so it's broken. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. You're just a tragic figure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I did it because I thought I could carry it with, like, under one arm while I was, like, high-fiving someone. What is I wrong just... with you? <laughs> <laughs> it that wasn't is, even like... A... That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I won a, uh, I won a, a bottle of Coke at that land. For... See, guys, that's what the prize pools used to be. Yeah. You win this land that lasts two days and we extends finished. till five in the morning, and you win, you win some Diet Coke. Yeah, we we finished third. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. Tough 15 time. to 11 to get us back on track. Four chances for G2 to close this out, and they've got a lot of space. Nobody has eyes on this yet. A very passive defense from MIBR might be their undoing because Nax, the first point of contact against these AK 47s, he's only got a FAMAS and he can't even get a bullet off. That's both A defenders dead. Again, three players towards the B bomb site, and it's all lost from here. Good shot from Amanek. Good control, a better follow up. He's going to end.